Shalom, like give our undergoing praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakodash, like give double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Aki and push this word across the four corners of the world. And this is an article from WAPT.com, and the title says Mississippi School Assignment on Slavery Sparks Outrage. And this was published on March the 4th, 2021. It says a school writing assignment on slavery for an eighth grade history class in Mississippi has sparked outrage in the community. Lamar County School District Superintendent Dr. Stephen Hampton confirmed to WDAM TV the slave letter writing activity was assigned to students during a class at Purvis Middle School on Wednesday. From this little picture right here, this is an actual picture of the assignment, which is called a slave letter writing activity assignment. And it says the assignment asks students to pretend like you are a slave working on a Mississippi plantation and write a letter to your family back in Africa or in another American state describing your life. Hampton said the assignment was part of a presentation discussing the atrocities and negatives of slavery. He says school administrators have addressed the teacher about the assignment and further discussed his plan with administrators at the district level. So as you can see with these Edomites, which is the true biblical identity for you so-called Caucasians, they love to make mockery and take light of our plight coming here on cargo slave ships and suffering the hardships and the injustices here in America. And that just proves more and more through the spirit that the curses written in the scriptures about the Israelites coming into the different parts of the world, suffering hardships, the curses, reproaches and mockery just further proves that the Bible is very authentic. And that leads me to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 15th verse. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And that's pursuant to the Israelites, who are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We the one that the Heavenly Father Yahweh made that covenant with. And by that breach of contract, by us not following the ways of the Heavenly Father Yahweh via his laws, statutes, and commandments, we have to suffer the curses. And part of the curses was we were going to be made a mockery, a reproach to these other nations. Which lead me to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and the 37th verse. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword, among all nations, whether the Lord should lead thee. So we were going to be like a derision, giving these scornful names like African-American, Latino, Native American, Hispanic. Those are nothing but proverbs and bywords. So as a people, the Israelites, we were going to be ridiculed for breaking that contract with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay, going back to this article. So it says this school assignment on slavery and the teacher wanted the students to write a letter back to their families back in Africa. And that's that misconception, that false narrative that we were taught here in America, that the so-called Negroes are Africans. As the Israelites, yes, we do share history with the land of Africa, which is really called the land of Ham or the land of Kum. Yes, we do have people still over there due to the diaspora or the diaspora, the scattering of the Israelites after the time frame of 70 AD. But to pinpoint us and put that tag on us as being Africans, that's a total lie. And that's why it says in the book of Nahum, the third chapter, woe to the bloody city, referencing America, known as Babylon the Great. And it says that it's all full of lies. So everything that we was taught here coming up in these school systems were nothing but lies, deceptions. So just to prove that point about us being from Africa, this is from blackhistoryinthebible.com. And as you can see, it says, Zondervan Bible Dictionary Negroes are not from the line of Ham. And just to get to the point, it says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became a progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. And that's from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. So yes, we might be similar to the same color shade of the so-called Africans. And you do have a lot of our people still over there, but to identify us as being Africans, that's not true. 
And that's false according to the scriptures and that's false according to secular history. So the so-called Africans, their true biblical identity is Ham, the Hamites. And that word Africa goes back to a so-called Roman general or an Edomite general by the name of Cornelius Scipio Africanus. So by saying that we are Africans, you're trying to say that we come from the lineage of Scipio Africanus, which is a lie. You know, these other nations, mainly Esau, Edom, they love to make mockery and ridicule us about our plight here as being slaves and the hardships that we have to suffer here in our captivity. And all this goes back to biblical prophecies that these things were going to happen to the true Israelites. And there's just more proof and evidence what our true biblical identity is. As it says that the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the heavenly father, Yahweh. And that leads me to the book of Jeremiah, the 24th chapter and the ninth verse. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt. And that's due to the diaspora or the diaspora. Where we was going to be scattered across the four corners of the world. And that's by that breach of contract, that binding agreement that the Israelites made with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So we broke that contract and therefore we had to suffer by being removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That's why I stated earlier that, yes, we do have a lot of our people over there in the parts of Africa. But to identify us as being Africans, no, we are not. So it says, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt to be a reproach and a proverb. Going right back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 37th verse. And we're going to be a tongue and a curse in all places whether I should drive them. And you see that nowadays there's more and more proof who the true Israelites are. You read in the book of Ezekiel, the 25th chapter and the 26th chapter, when these other nations saw the downfall of our people, they was like, aha, meaning that they got us. They glorified in our persecutions, meaning that they know that those curses pertain to us. So they knew by us being on the bottom of the totem pole, that was going to raise them up in this society, in this world. This is Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter and the fourth verse. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed. And has defiled thyself and thy idols which thou hast made. So our forefathers kept serving other gods. And that made the heavenly father Yahweh jealous. He's a jealous power. Because he looked at us, the Israelites, as his woman, pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter and the second verse. So by us making those covenants with these other nations serving their gods, the heavenly father got furious and he sent us away into all the kingdoms of the earth. And it says, and has defiled thyself and thy idols which thou hast made, and thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and are come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. And that goes right back to being a reproach, the derision, those scornful expressions, such as those bywords. They call us everything but our true biblical identity, which are Israelites. And this is the book of Joel 3 and 3. And they have cast lots for my people, hence the slave auction blocks, and had given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. And you can look into history about our people on those slave plantations where you had things called sex forms, where they bred us like animals. And you had the different Edomite slave owners, they would impregnate and enslave Israelite women. And when the child was born, they grew up to an age where they could work on the fields. And that was all beneficial to that slave master slave plantation. There was more money for them. And they did all types of abundable acts upon our people. Verse 4. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, which are the so-called Africans, the biblical Hamites, and all the coasts of Palestine, which are the so-called Arabs, which are the biblical Ishmaelites, where they all had a part in that covenant with the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, to put us into slavery, sent us off in these cargo slave ships. So this is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Joel and saying this, will ye render me a recompense, meaning a payback, retribution? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So the things that they did to us, we're going to do to them double. But we're not going to be doing those same wicked and abominable acts 
that they did to us in slavery. We are not gonna be raping their wives or separating the children from the parents in the slave trade. What they did to us was very immoral. But as us being governed by Yahweh by Shem with his laws, statutes, and commandments, we're gonna be the utmost moral people on the earth. We're gonna do everything in righteousness. It says in the book of Revelation that they're gonna receive double. So they can make mockery about a slave written assignment to these students. You know, it's cool. Have your fun while you can. But as I'm speaking right now, your beloved America is crumbling. So it's nothing that you can do that can save it, try to revamp it. It's all biblical prophecy that this place America known as Babylon the Great is gonna fall. So get your laugh in while you can. And as it says, an old proverb, that he that laughs last, laughs the best. And that's gonna be the true Israelites, starting with the elect. And it leads me to the book of Lamentations, the fourth chapter and the 21st verse. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. So yeah, enjoy your kingdom while you can. Because once the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through His Son, Yahweh Shah, stripped their power away from you, you will never rule again in lifetime. That dwellest in the land of us, the cup also should pass through unto thee. So that cup is referencing those hardships, those reproaches, those proverbs, those bywords, those derisions, ultimately those curses. As it says in the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter and the 7th verse, that the Most High is going to put all the curses upon thy enemies. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So starting from the tabernacle of Edom and trickling on down to these other nations, they're going to catch the same curses that we're catching right now. So those curses are going to spiritually leave off of us. It's going to cling on to these other nations. Starting with the tabernacle of Edom, where they're going to be made mockery of and reproached wherever they are scattered to. So it says, The cup also should pass through unto thee, Thou should be drunken and should make thyself naked. Verse 22, the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So all the curses that we went through as a people, all the different reincarnations that we had to suffer, all that's going to be over with pretty soon. And you can see what's happening in the news right now. We're getting closer and closer for Yahweh Shai's second return. So that's something to be rejoiced and be glad about to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. So the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. And as you can see right now, everything is unfolding about this so-called white man. All the dirty secrets, your hidden agendas, your dark secrets that you have been hiding for many, many ages. So everything is coming to the light now. And that's pursuant to biblical prophecies that that skirt was going to be lifted up. Because it says in the book of Revelation 18 chapter how Babylon is sitting as a queen. And it also stated in that scripture to give her much torment and sorrow. So we're not going to be feeling sorry for you when it's your turn to face the Most High for your judgments because you didn't feel sorry for us. So all these different things that they did to us in slavery, you know, they want to make mockery about it. They want to take it lightly. Try to do written assignments about it to the students. So that's cool. You know, get your laugh in now while you can. Because at the end of the day, pursuant to biblical prophecies, all these nations that spoiled us, you have touched the apple of the Most High's eyes. And you go into the word apple, it goes into pupil. And one thing about your pupil is very sensitive, it's delicate. So that's how the Most High look at the children of Israel, his delicate ones. So Lord willing, you always edified by that. Shalom.